Hi guys, welcome to the Birmingham Botanical Garden. I am Cece Todd and I volunteer with the Junior League of Birmingham. Did you know there is always something new to explore at the gardens? Admission is free and these extraordinary gardens are open every day of the week. We also have a library on site and we offer children's books and so much more. We invite you to visit us and find out exactly what the gardens mean to you. The Junior League of Birmingham is an organization of women who strive to help and support the amazing community that we live in. Through Can You Dig It, our educational partnership with the Friends of the Birmingham Botanical Gardens, I am so excited to guide you on your discovery field trip today. Today at our discovery field trip, it leads us to the Carver Garden. As we explore fascinating plant discoveries of George Washington Carver, a famous Alabama scientist from the early 20th century, we grow three agricultural crops at the Birmingham Botanical Gardens that Carver studied to help Alabama farmers and farmers around the world. Can you guess what these are? Let's find out. All right, so you might have already guessed that one of the plants growing here is the amazing peanut plant. How did the peanut plant make the difference? Southern farmers were planting cotton season after season and they had a big problem. Because they were growing one crop, their soil was becoming very unhealthy. It no longer contained the nutrients plants needed to grow. By way of Jessup Wagon, Carver traveled to southern communities to educate farmers by saying, farmers, if you grow peanuts, peanuts will make your soil healthy again because they enrich the soil with nitrogen as they grow. What do you predict happened? Yep, he changed their lives and the lives of many by teaching farmers about crop rotation. Farmers listened to Carver and they grew so many peanuts they didn't know what to do with all of them. So Carver went back to his laboratory at the Tuskegee Institute in Tuskegee, Alabama, where he was head of the agricultural department to discover hundreds of uses for the peanut. Let's find out how a peanut grows to see how it is a major player in crop rotation. Can you identify the parts of a peanut plant? Let's take a look. There are yellow flowers, pegs, and roots. Did you know the peanut plants its own seed? Once the yellow flower falls off, a little peg forms at the flower site and plants itself into the soil. What do you think we will discover growing underneath? Let's harvest and find out! Okay, so fun fact. Peanuts grow underground. Do you remember that word we learned earlier, nitrogen? Well, nitrogen is that nutrient that plants need to grow. Peanuts grow and put nitrogen back into the soil so that cotton can grow another year and produce a healthy crop. If you look closely, you can see nitrogen even without a microscope. All right, guys, so the Botanical Gardens gave me this fabulous digging spade. And what's super exciting is that I have never experienced this either. This is gonna be our first time together figuring out what exactly it looks like, how peanuts are grown. So they explained to me that when you're digging up peanuts, you take your fork and we wanna go deep down into the ground, use some muscle, all right? And try to get down deep under these, oh, I see them! Deep under the plant. And then we're gonna reach down here and oh, look at all these super cool peanuts! Look at them! Look at these little guys. Oh, this is so amazing. Look at Mother Earth, you go girl. So look at this, this is how they're grown, if you can see. These are our little peanuts right here. And you can even see the little pegs coming down. And you can, this one even has one of the beautiful blooms on it. So all the parts of the peanut plant, and that's what it looks like. Did you know Carver also found hundreds of uses for the sweet potato? 
You may guess why. That's right, because sweet potatoes also enrich the soil with nitrogen. Let's take a look at how they grow. All right, so the botanical gardens have given me this lovely digging fork and told me that I could come out here and dig up my very own sweet potato. So after walking around and seeing a couple of little smaller ones that are nestled into the ground, I saw this one right here and he looked like the root system going down into him looks like he's gonna be magnificent. So they gave me a couple of tips and they said what you wanna do is get your digging spade and you wanna go down and kinda get up under. Oh, take some, take some strength to get it. And then push up. Oh, oh my goodness, look at him. Oh, so look at all of this fabulousness, guys. Oh my gosh, so this is what a sweet potato looks like straight out of the ground. It's like a whole little family of them. And isn't that just the coolest thing ever? So what's super cool is this is gonna wind up on somebody's dinner table tonight. So what I wanna know from you is what is your favorite way to enjoy a sweet potato? Following the advice of George Washington Carver, farmers in the early 1900s could now grow healthy cotton. Farmers today still follow his advice by rotating their crops every season. If they plant peanuts or other nitrogen fixing plants such as sweet potatoes in the garden one season, they will plant cotton the next season because cotton needs nitrogen to grow. Can you think of some uses for cotton? During World War II, Southerners were eating a diet mostly containing meat, molasses, and meal. What was their diet missing? Leafy vegetables and vitamin C. Carver wrote a bulletin called Nature's Garden for Victory and Peace, teaching people how to find and cook wild edibles, including dandelions, clovers, and violets. Let's try a scavenger hunt to identify, but not consume, these plants. Look for leaves with toothed edges and yellow flowers. Now look for heart-shaped leaves and purple flowers. Look for clover and white cone-shaped flowers. Remember, young naturalist, when identifying these plants, please leave them for nature because they provide food for wildlife and plants for pollinators. When George Washington Carver was growing up, he reached his education and career goals by doing something he believed in, reaching for the stars and keeping up the good work to persevere even when he was faced with challenges. As a child, he loved the outdoors. He became known as the plant doctor because he had a gift of making plants grow. He said, I wanted to know every strange stone, flower, insect, bird, or beast by learning about and caring for the wonders of nature, we too have the power to make a difference in our world as we are inspired by this Alabama hero, George Washington Carver. We hope that you get a chance to visit the gardens to explore the amazing Carver Garden. It's just up the walkway from the Bruno Vegetable Garden. Check out our website to learn more.